How are you doing? You know, some things are ingenious, and quite often ingenious things are hatched from evil minds. I've had a few of these. Of course, I never cashed them. Before I actually start this video on gravity, I'd like to uh, show you these two checks. They're both exactly the same. They're for $25. And uh, I know you can't see it, but up here at the top, I'm going to hide my address. It says, Account Sponsorship. Now, some of you may or may not know this, but a check is like a contract in some states. I think it might be in all states. In other words, when you cash the check, you're agreeing to something. And so what this nefarious extremely evil person does is they take advantage of people with uh, YouTube um, channels and they send them a $25 check like this guy's done. Okay, I've got a few of these. I think this is $25 check number five. Yeah, and yeah, here's, you know, here we go. What do they do is when you cash this $25 check, they assume you're going to be a sucker and a fool and uh, cash it. And when you do that, what you're doing is you're... Uh, agreeing to this person sponsoring you kind of like they're your agent of course they don't have to do anything it's like you agreed to it and now you have like a legal binding contract or you have to give a certain percentage of your income to this nefarious person all in exchange for you being a sucker and cashing a $25 check <laughs> but since the tattooed monkey is incredibly intelligent he's not gonna fall for that nonsense oh no girlfriend I'm not um, I keep getting this uh, same statement over and over again, and it's okay. All of uh, humanity kind of thinks like that because we were all taught this nonsense in school. We have the idea of a center of gravity, um, but there's a lot of important points on that. It's the same thing that I've talked about endlessly regarding magnetism. Everybody on this earth thinks there's such a thing as magnetic attraction, but magnetism by definition cannot be um, centripetal convergence. Also, too, magnets do not accelerate towards one another. They actually accelerate towards a null pressure point in the ether. This is actually visible, and you could actually see it underneath the ferrocell. And this is also true of gravitational bodies. That seems like a nuance or a distinction without a difference, but the distinction and the nuance is incredibly important. But anyway, there is no such thing as a center of gravity. But before getting to gravity, I've talked about this endlessly, that there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Now, if these two things are magnets, as typical human being would make a superficial and unintelligent conclusions, and they're accelerating towards one another, and once again, they're not actually accelerating towards one another, but rather towards a null pressure point between the two, then we'll say, well, these are two magnets are accelerating towards one another. That's magnetic attraction. Human beings for countless thousands of years, because lodestones, which is nature's uh, cool little magnet, I don't know if you've ever had a lodestone before, but they're uh, fascinating things that are found in the hillsides, and people have been playing with them, Chinese and Greeks and Indians, for many, many, many thousands of years. Okay? So we've got this uh, mental ineptitude that's uh, many millennia old, that, you know, there's magnets accelerating, there's magnetic attraction. Well, magnetic attraction does not exist. That's uh, dielectric acceleration. And uh, the only distinction between so-called magnetic attraction, which is not magnetism based at all, yeah, and that of gravity is that one is point source, mutual mass acceleration, the other one is non-point source, or incoherent mutual mass acceleration. It would be the same distinction between a five watt light bulb and a five watt laser. Five watts is five watts, right? Well, the quality of the two are different. One is point source and the other one is non-point source. Five-watt light bulb, as I've said humorously, is completely useless, really. Five-watt laser will permanently blind you and it will burn a hole in your backside. I actually have some five-watt uh, blue lasers. They're insanely dangerous. Insanely dangerous. No one's afraid of a five-watt light bulb. They're useless. A five-watt laser... Anyway, the same thing that we call gravity. I don't know if you've ever opened up a box that has those stupid styrofoam pellets in it that everybody hates. And, of course, your hand sticks to them and you sit here trying to get rid of them. That electrostatic cling is absolutely no different than gravity. Gravity is not an autonomous fuel modality. When I actually say 
gravity doesn't exist. I'm not actually denying the phenomena. I mean, there's, I love it when I actually get comments like that all the time. Gravity doesn't exist. Like, okay, well, what's that? Well, you know, it's like if gravity doesn't exist, then why don't you jump off of a tall ladder? I don't literally mean that, but the phenomena, of course, is undeniable. But it's not an autonomous field modality. Um, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. But that's not to say the phenomena, you know, of two magnets accelerating towards one another doesn't exist. Of course it does. That is just point source mutual mass acceleration. That acceleration is point source. It is exactly like a laser, except it's a different field phenomena. A field, of course, and very simplex. If you don't understand things simply, then you really don't understand it. A field, of course, is nothing other than an ether perturbation modality. Uh, elect and the, the, the electric universe people, which I call the, uh, the well, I better not say this. They, believe, they think everything is plasma. But, I mean, electricity doesn't exist either because it's not an autonomous field modality, nor is it something unique in itself. And, by the way, this is not my opinion. This is stated on page 14, electrical discharges, waves, and impulses by someone even smarter than Nikola Tesla. And many people have said that, and I've said this many times before. As smart as you think Tesla is, Charles Prodi Steinmetz is smarter. Anyway, I think it's on page 14. He said even in his day, and the book was printed in 1917, which means he wrote it, I think, 1914 to 1915. He said even in his day, which is a little hair over 100 years ago, that uh, uh, electrical theorists had completely complicated the understanding of electricity. Brilliant. You have to read a book that's a hair over 100 years old to actually understand what electricity is. Electricity doesn't exist. It's like, this is electricity. It doesn't exist. The phenomena does exist. You know, the phenomena of so-called magnetic attraction exists too, but it's not magnetism at all. Same is true of gravity. But anyway, uh, electricity is a hybrid. And Eric Dollard has said this, and he's just parroting what Charles Proti Steinmetz said, that electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. It's not something in itself. Neither does gravity exist. The phenomena, of course, is undeniable. I'm not denying gravity, and I laugh every time I see somebody in a video say, gravity doesn't exist. It's like, well, what do you think the phenomena is then? And uh, I find that to be really quite humorous and odd and strange. Um, but it doesn't. The same thing, and please listen to me when I say this. I don't like repeating myself too much. The same thing people call magnetic attraction that's not magnetism. And the same thing with a styrofoam pellet sticking to your hand. And the same phenomena that human beings call gravity is exactly the same thing. The only distinction between the two is in their attribute. And of course, I referred to three different things, but between um, magnets accelerating towards one another, and they're not accelerating towards one another, rather a null pressure point between the two, as I've demonstrated endlessly underneath the ferro cell, and gravity is that one is point source, and the other one is non-point source, mutual, mutual mass acceleration. But gravity has no center. Um, it's also true of a Gauss meter, and this is done with uh, Gauss meter probes, which is verifiable quantifiable that the center of a magnet, there is no uh, magnetic flux. Nearly is nil. It's essentially nil. You can never actually put it right smack in the middle of a magnet. But the center of uh, gravity, there is no gravity. You know, we all have, and just think about this for a second, and this is an important teaching mechanism. We all have within our minds that the further you get away from something, if it's one thing, you know, the more dilute or dispersed it is. Yeah? It's kind of like a smell of something, right? Like there's a peanut butter factory in downtown Lexington. You know, the further away you get, the less you smell it. The closer you get, the more you smell it. I don't know how people live around that peanut butter factory because they don't, all they smell all day long, 24 hours, it's peanut butter! <laughs> but we all have this notion that the closer, the greater proximity you have to something, the greater it is. However, when it pertains to field modalities, and this is true of all field modalities except for one, and that one is not a modality, it's the ether under stress or torsion, which would be the dielectric. We could say electrostatic, I don't care what you call it, it doesn't matter, Mother Nature doesn't care. At the center of a magnetic field, there is no magnetism. At the center of a so-called gravitational field, there is no gravity. And why would that be? Gravity, of course, is mutual mass acceleration, non-point source, yes? Single mass, you know, we're sticking to the Earth, yes? If we were able to travel to the center of the Earth in a glass bubble or something, and not that a glass bubble would survive, there would be no measurable acceleration. 
gravity has no center. And yet all of us throughout our entire lives have these brain bugs of like the speed of light, which doesn't exist. It's a hysteresis of the ether. It's the rate of uh, induction of uh, the coaxial circuit of light, speed of light, center of gravity. We're, we're hurtling, Captain, towards the center of gravity. Well, gravity doesn't have a center. There's no center of a magnetic field either. What human beings call gravity is the erasure of space. It's the erasure of the magnetic field. The inverse of centrifugal force in motion is, of course, is increasing inertia and acceleration. We have, of course, the geometry of the hyperboloid. Yeah, we could actually see that in the Earth's poles, yes? There's also uh, a uh, gravitometer, which, of course, measures anomalies in the Earth's gravity. I don't want to get into that topic too much because that complicates things too much in people's head, but gravity has no center. That's completely impossible. It's ludicrous. It doesn't exist. So what are the implications thereof? By applying retroductive logic, common sense, and wisdom, we're able to discern what so-called gravity is. You know, there's a reason why the uh, works of, uh, you know, Syrianus, Iamblichus, Porphyry, Demetius, um, the writings of uh, James Kirk Maxwell. Have you ever read some of James Kirk Maxwell? All that stuff, most of it anyway, is free on archive.org. The writings of uh, C.P. Steinmetz, J.C. James Kirk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside. There's a reason why these people were geniuses. It's not that they really had something that you didn't. They had a particular tool within their mind to be able to discern the nature of things. Like, well, this cannot possibly be that. But anyway, this is not a video on retroduction. But gravity has no center, yet we all suffer under this uh, brain bug that we were embedded with when we were young, in high school, and college. Center of gravity, magnetic attraction, Magnetic attraction, that idea has existed literally for countless thousands of years. We had um, compasses um, that were made um, from lodestones. You could actually take a lodestone, you made an iron needle. You could actually rub the lodestone on the needle and you could make a compass. I mean, ancients discovered this thousands and thousands of years ago. And of course, when you make multiple needles, they will accelerate towards one another. Well, there's magnetic attraction. Well, magnetic attraction does not exist. And at the center of a magnetic field, an object, say this were a magnet, you're able to put a gauss meter right in the center of it, which you can do. Take two magnets and bring them together, put a, uh, a uh, gauss meter probe right between the two. There's no measurable magnetic flux. And that tells you something about magnetism. That also tells you the reason why there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. One of many countless reasons there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Everybody suffers under superficial delusions, understanding Mother Nature. Most of it's because people don't apply their minds to it, because it doesn't make them rich or famous. You know, it doesn't uh, forward them in life as far as their monetary gain. And I understand that. I mean, I really, really do. Um, you know, I have to struggle to survive. I work seven days a week. I just got done making a bunch of these alligator keychains, you know. Uh, so I, you know I, I work like a normal person does, too. Actually, I work too much. Working four jobs seven days a week is becoming way too much of a load on me anyway. But, uh, no, gravity has no center. There's no such thing as the center of a magnetic field, either. Nor is there any such thing as magnetic attraction. As soon as human beings start to realize these simple facts, they'll have a keener understanding into nature and how nature works. There is a key, there is a primer or a legend, yeah, like a legend of a map, that lets us understand what Mother Nature is screaming at every human being, that we refuse to listen. Most of us refuse to listen. I, however, am not one of those, but anyway. These are things to think about while you're taking a bath or a shower or driving to work tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday, but uh, anyway, I hope this uh, broadened your horizons intellectually and understanding cosmic mechanics, specifically field theory. Thank you so much for watching. I love this neat little scam where they send you these $25 checks. I'm not going to fall for it. Too smart for that. Thank God for that. God knows how many people have fallen for this nonsense. 
That's humanity for you. They'll try to take care, uh, take advantage of you any way they can. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.